You'd be out of business, wouldn't you, on 10 grams a month? I, I think so, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It is hot. It is most definitely barbecue season, but not if you're German. Hang on, don't the Germans eat more sausage than... You can't say that. Uh, this isn't an LGTBQ video. Doesn't Germany consume like more meat than anyone? Let's have a look at this article. Um, this is from June the 11th. Germany moves to roll out a vegan surveillance state. The German government's SRU Council on the Environment recommends that all citizens be limited to a meat equivalent of just two sausages a month in an all-encompassing totalitarian behaviour control plan. Two sausages a month. And I don't mean in LGTBQ terms. In a segment dubbed The Green Dietary Transformation, critical German journalist Julian Reichelt, Germany's version of Tucker Carlson, presents the craziest yet planned green ban, a complete elimination of meat from the human diet in Germany and worldwide. This is a bit terrifying, isn't it? Germany's Federal Minister of Agriculture, Sem Özdemir from the Green Party, is now moving to force Germans to radically stop meat consumption by limiting meat intake to just 10 grams daily, equivalent to about two burgers a month. What about the sausages? What about all the other stuff that needs to go on the barbecue? What about the spare ribs? What about the chicken? What about the liver? I love eating liver. Liver is absolutely a superfood. It's not gonna happen, is it? Um, the German government's latest proposal stems from recommendations made by the Sackverstandigenrat for Umweltfragen, <laughs> German Advisory Council on the Environment, which is set up to directly advise the German government on policy. And I'd imagine that organisation is absolutely not compromised by all the familiar faces that we're now so used to seeing in all of these videos that are predicting doom and gloom. It seems that the same names and the same organisations are always involved in this sort of stuff. The recommendation is the latest effort by Germany's socialist green government to regulate every aspect of human life and to ban everything that contributes modern human prosperity and wealth. Radical behaviour alterations have been deemed a must. According to the SRU, let's do that one again, Sachverstandigenrat für Umweltfragen. According to them, the manifold environmental crisis of our time can only become by radically altering human behaviour, which means the way we live, consume, move and feed ourselves. In the YouTube video, which I'll link below, Mr. Reichelt presents some excerpts of the SRU. Come on, one more time. Sackverstandigenrat für Umweltfragen. Recommendations to the German government. The government is gearing up to make meat so expensive that few people will be able to afford it. Children are to be instilled with new values, pitted against their parents, and the government will make meat disappear from view everywhere. This is the most radical measure in German history. And German history, there's some pretty radical measures in German history. The 222 page government SRU, come on, one more time. Sackverstandigenrat für Umweltfragen. I think I'm getting better at that. The report has it all down black and white. This is not a conspiracy theory. It's the blueprint for the future of humanity, authored by a small group of elitist Germans who believe they know what's best for the entire world. According to Reichelt, what's coming at us from the Federal Ministry of Agriculture is nothing less than the largest, most radical and comprehensive upbringing measure of the history of the Federal Republic of Germany. The language in this document sounds like it comes directly out of the utopia of a vegan surveillance state. Do you want to live in a vegan surveillance state utopia? I don't think I do. I haven't got enough hair to dye it purple. The SRU recommends increasing the tax on meat to a level that would make it unaffordable for the lower income working class, for whom a barbecue is one of the few remaining pleasures left to enjoy after a hard day's work. The SRU expert advisors to the German government also recommend eliminating meat from school cafeterias and instilling new values and norms in children with the aim of further psychologically pressuring and shaming families away from meat consumption. Of course, the government is advised to implement these radical nutritional measures as stealthily as possible. The SRU document says, 
if it's communicated in the future that cafeterias are required to follow the quality standards of the German Association of Nutrition, and it not be mentioned that it's about a reduced amount of meat being offered, then there would possibly be less attack from the media. Meat should be more difficult to access. In the event that citizens insist on meat, then it should be made so that it is hidden away and made difficult to find, like X-rated movies in the video store, hidden from sight in another room. Whoever reaches for it should be ashamed and allegedly it should be taken off restaurant menus. Uh, restaurants and other public eateries meat would not appear at all on the menus and would only be offered on a separate menu that would be handed to the patron upon request. That's the recommendation made by the government's very own SRU advisory board. I won't do the SRU bit again. The SRU Advisory Council have gone so far as to recommend overhauling supermarket shopping carts in a way that would promote the purchase of vegetables and plant-based foods and discourage meat buying. It's all written in the SRU report. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's do as I say, not do as I do, because what about the government officials themselves? Well, of course not. Agriculture Minister Ozademir is a hearty meat eater himself. His wife's his wife was recently filmed preparing a two kilo steak. Hang on a minute, how much are you allowed? 10 grams daily, two kilos. Right, how many days worth of meat did she eat? Let's work it out. Oh no, my iPhone needs to cool down. That's global warming that is. No, it's not, it's summer and I left it on the dashboard of a hot car, which you absolutely shouldn't do with a dog. Although people will be doing that because they're gonna be eating their pets when all of this comes in. Anyway. His wife was preparing a two kilo steak and that video of her preparing the steak has since been removed from the internet. Also, at last year's Oktoberfest, you know, the festival of basically beer and sausage, Green Party leaders were recorded enjoying a huge plate of meat sausage while guzzling beer from their mugs. The elitists have no intention of following their own rules. We know that they don't. We want to save the planet. The last thing we're going to do is ban the private jets. We want to save the planet. All of you lot have got to eat lab-grown meat and bugs, but we get all the sausage. This is ludicrous. So I don't have a great deal more to say about that. What do you think? Could you go down to 10 grams of meat a day? Um, are you vegan? As I've said before on my previous videos, we've done the vegan thing from a health point of view. It didn't work for us. We are meat eaters. I feel much better when I'm eating meat. We know the farmers are under a lot of pressure. I'm hoping this is going to be the first of many of my videos about farming and what's going on within farming in this country and abroad. I've just been to my farmer today. Not my farmer. I don't own him. I've been to the farmer who does the raw milk. I've bought my last batch of raw milk from him because he sold the herd and he's retired. Why is he retiring? Because the government launched a scheme to incentivize farmers to retire. They are literally paying off the farmers to stop making food. We've seen it on Clarkson's farm. We've seen it on Harry Metcalf's farm where he's basically going to be paid an equivalent amount of money to leave fields empty and not grow any food in them. There is a planned food shortage coming and they want to stop you from eating meat. So let's finish this video. And if you did get to the end of the video, I'd love you to support Narrowways Butchers by commenting in the comments saying, that looks like a top quality butchers that does, Jeff. Here's Ian from Narrowways talking to me earlier on when I went to buy some food to put on my barbecue. I'm having a barbecue tonight because I read that today. So I'm here today at the butchers to pick up some high quality meat. This is Ian at Narrowways in Worcester. Narrowways has been here since when? Forever? Uh, yeah, forever, we'll say. I've been here since 75, 76. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I still enjoy the job and like meeting people and doing what I do best, selling meat. So let's say it's a Sunday evening, right? It's, you know, the sun's going down, it's beautiful, the barbecue's on, what's on it? What's your favorite? Oh, I kind of use those uh, ribs over there. That's yeah. uh, marinated and they're absolutely gorgeous. I love, I, love, I like a lot of finger food. Yeah. So basically I could just sit there tapping away at pork, lamb, yeah. chicken, a yeah. bit of everything really. Yeah. Like a proper good barbecue. Yeah, so the idea of Germany saying we should only have 10 grams of meat a month is... Um... I, I, I really struggle with that. Yeah. You find that it's just always a minority, always makes a load of sounds, don't they? Well, I think you'll find the healthiest meat is, is grown in a lab, distributed from factories and all controlled by one large investment fund. What, what about that? Uh, well, I'll let you sort that one out. <laughs> I'm trying my best, I'm trying. <laughs>
got to stand up to all this globalist claptrap, haven't we? You can't have the French government saying we're going to kill all the cows because of climate change and India just purchased 500 planes from the UK. You can't have the UK government saying, oh, we're going to sort out all the air with all the ULEZ schemes and all that sort of stuff, while simultaneously praising a British company for selling 500 passenger jets to India who have a horrendous record on, well, virtually everything. Human rights, the environment, all of it. Yay, we just sold them 500 planes. Maybe we could save the economy, which is being deliberately tanked by the bankers. You are going to lose your house, if not in this current mortgage rate rise, when they turn around and say, oh, actually, Mr. Thompson, your home, it's an EPCF rating. And if you want to keep living in your home, you need to bring it up to standard. It needs to be an A. Well, how much is it going to cost to make my house an EPC A rating so I'm legally allowed to carry on living in it? £150,000. Well, I don't have £150,000. Well, in that case, then, we'll repossess your house and we'll rent it back to you. You'll sort of own it, but not own it. Well, you won't own it. In fact, you won't own anything, but you'll be happy. Is it all starting to ring bells? Because it's absolutely all connected. Bit of a crazy video today. Must be the heat. Must be climate change. I'm going to go home and get the barbecue on put my 10 grams of meat on it this is how i'm rolling today that is a mercedes-benz steel wheel and part of an old school chair now it's my double rack barbecue and it is superb we have some spare rib from narrowways we have some lamb minted lamb from narrowways that is a, a father's day steak that the wife bought me and a bit of liver on top as well absolute feast screw you and your 10 gram meat limit. I wanna eat what I want, leave me alone. Look at the size of that steak. Oh yeah, this is a bit of a treat to be fair. I did buy extra meat just because I was making a video about barbecues, but come on, how good does that look? The ribs, the ribs are superb. Oh yeah, right, next, I'm gonna launch a food channel.